To many people, he's known as John the Map. Others, he's John Callanan. And he is a, a, a stalwart of so many scenes in Sligo, but mostly the music scene. But uh, the first thing most people will know for is the maps, John. So, John, firstly, we're going to chat about your maps and a big welcome to the show. Thanks for coming Thanks, in. Thanks for giving us your time. Thanks, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, the old nice elbow. <laughs> so, I think most people may have heard your name and maybe not have seen you or, or heard from you. So, I suppose to give a little bit of background, like what is your background? Where you originate from, or you know, how did you end up okay. in Sligo eventually? Well, I'm, I'm actually from northwest London. Okay. But all my family's from Sligo. Ah. So my aunt and uncle had a shop on the mall called uh, Hennigan's. And uh, my second cousin had a pub on Wine Street, Hennigan's. And uh, I've got family in Colooney and Letterkenny and oh, so you're all well, over the place. Well so. rooted in Sligo yeah. at this point. And I suppose going back to the John the Map thing, mm. uh, I mean, I came to Sligo a number of years ago and I remember seeing the brochures. So mm. if people have picked up a brochure, a Sligo a tourism brochure, you've probably been the guy that has drawn that map years ago. Well, mo most of the maps made in the town are either copied off my map or okay. are right, they are yours original. Yeah. Right. And so you are a cartographer or a map maker or how would you describe yourself well cartographers just draw maps okay uh, as the name suggests cart is map graphy is no graphics okay, draw. so uh, but i'm actually a map maker i go to the place i measure all the streets i measure all the alleyways and uh, take note of what's there and then make a map so i'm both map maker and cartographer okay and i call myself an explorer but explorer. nobody believes that they know it's <laughs> nonsense you know no no big problem which title it is <laughs> yeah. as long as you as long as they give you the money for the maps as you oh, of course yeah and you've uh, like, you've been all over the world with your map well, making. Well, mainly Europe and Asia and America. Okay, and, and where did that start? Did you just decide, I'm going to search a country or... Uh, well, when, when, when I was younger, I mean, not much younger, but yeah. fairly younger, I used to hitchhike a lot in England and then round Ireland and mm. Scotland and then round Europe. I got to the point where I was basically, I might be in a party in Norway one week, <laughs> the next week I might be a gig in Portugal, the next yeah. week I might be in Athens just hitchhiking around. And then the idea came to me that I was going to go out to Asia and really kind of stretch the whole hitchhiking thing. So I went out to Asia, but ended up in Pakistan on my way to India, found the Karakoram Highway was open, so I decided to go up to China. And then I started mapping the Karakoram Highway, which took 13 years. And You, you were telling me that you accidentally kind of started making maps. Where was it, Pakistan? Yeah, Northern From Pakistan, a, a yeah. foot injury or something, was it? That's right, yeah. Well, the problem was I was in a place called the Hunza Valley, okay. which is basically Ismaili Muslims. They believe the Aga Khan, Prince Karim Aga Khan, the, the famous racehorse owner, hmm. they believe he's the direct descendant of Ali, okay. the fourth caliph, and also son-in-law of Muhammad because he's married to Muhammad's daughter. But uh, as a result of their connection to him, they don't smoke. So I mm -hmm. ran out of smokes in their village, had to run downhill to get me smokes, and dislocated me on my ankle on the way down. Then through a lot of different stories, yeah. I ended up basically for physiotherapy, wandering around the valley, and I started drawing a map. Okay, and you used to draw menus in that before you were telling me as well. So yeah, that, that drawing, drawing, then... drawing menus was a way to make money as you yeah, go along. Yeah, as you travelled. Yeah. Okay, because you earned your keep and got you yeah, your food. Sure. Well, you'd be amazed how many restaurants you go into in Asia, and it'd have soap of the day, that sort of thing. Right, know, okay. Soup of the day. So and it's just, just simple things like that, that, you know. So. Uh, so once you were kind of stuck in one spot, you said, right, I'll draw some maps. Precisely, yeah. And then... Well, that, but then it became who I was. I became yeah. John the Map, you know. Yes. So yes, everywhere yeah. I went, I was expected to make a map. Make a map. So yeah. you were glad to do them. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Well, it's, it's, I only map places I like. Oh, right, okay. So Sligo's so. very privileged, though. Yes, yeah. well, no. <laughs> to be on the list. It's, it's a very local place, like that. Yeah, yeah, well, and on your travels, I mean, I know Sligo might not be the most uh, exotic place, let's call it, mm. where you went, but there were some places where you, I know before from reading an article, you got arrested before. Yeah, so yeah. well, I, I, like I, got, I got arrested quite a lot in Asia. Okay. Because some countries are more or less paranoid than others. Right, and what did they think you were, you were doing? Like, well, or? spying. They thought you were spying, yeah, yeah, okay. And how many times did you get arrested? I was arrested 14 times in total, but only deported once. Only for it once. Yeah, okay. so. so when you got arrested, so it was just maybe overnight or whatever. Well, you'd be amazed. One time I got arrested by the police who brought this in uh, central Pakistan, the Swat mm. Valley, which was in the news a number of years ago because the Taliban invaded it. But I was invaded there. It was, it's, it's basically part of the Gandharan civilization from okay. the fourth century BC. And I was mapping it from that perspective. But I was brought in by the police and they just left me sitting in a room. And they didn't question me, and I was just sat there thinking what's going on. And uh, fortunately, purely by luck, I know the uh, commander-in-chief of the Frontier Constabulary, and he happens right. to be from the Swap Valley, which is where I was. So I, uh, when one of the police came in, I just said, is Johnny around? They said, Johnny, Johnny who? I said, Johnny Milk. 
And he looked at me and said, the Johnny Milk? And I said, yes, my very good friend. And you said, wow. cup of tea, cake. <laughs> <laughs> so you so went from so, prisoner to, to royalty now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You, got well. you never tell. Have you ever been arrested in Sligo or so? Uh, not in Sligo, in, in, in Cork I've been, well, I've been brought in by the police. And Trump Shambo, they brought me in. And, and this and is Mac related as well? Yeah. In Drum Shambo, this fella called, uh, I can't remember, Pat, I think his name right. was, cop, basically arrested, well, he didn't arrest me, he brought me to the police station and made me stay there for a couple of hours and okay. took my maps and <laughs> was saying he was going to confiscate them and this sort of thing. And, but you got away with them again? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. So then you finally, when did you finally come back to Sligo itself? After you, after you travelled the world, when did you come back to Sligo and settle here then? Uh, around about 2000 I came here. Okay. And because I've been coming here all my life. Since the age of two I've been coming here. Oh, back 1958 forth. was the first time I was here. Okay. And so then you, you uh, started to draw S Sligo. Mm. And as I said, we've all seen them. But well, Sligo was growing so much because between about 1996 and say the end of the Celtic Tiger, which is probably about 2008, 2009, mm. Sligo grew, I mean, I don't know, 40 odd estates. Yes, some okay, small and yeah. some big, you know. So you had more things to draw. had 11 new estates for God's sake. Right, you know? Okay. Mm. And uh, so. You've been drawing these maps for years, and yeah. I know that you now have a new product mm. coming out as well, which you were showing us earlier, so we oh, might let you have, as luck, uh, would have it, <laughs> as luck would have it, <laughs> here's one chance. I prepared earlier. I'm making the, uh, oops, upside down. I'm making the uh, hand-printed limited edition maps of, you guessed it, Sligo. Sligo. Well, and this one beautiful. is, uh, this is Sligo Art and Architecture. So it has uh, all the buildings, including the cathedrals, and it has all the uh, murals. And uh, I, see, I see you have the Sligo style. Uh, the Sligo yeah, style over here, that's right. It's a yeah. little piece. Yeah, and then I've I know got... you've handed these to us as well. This, this is... is, sorry, this is... The that, that's the, the pubs, pubs of Sligo, yeah. It's, that's the pubs, like Funnily enough, I've done a new version of that because the images didn't come out very well in that one. Okay, but you're going to have uh, these available I sold soon. my first copy of this today to uh, a friend called James. Very good. And uh, yeah, it's basically all the pubs and it's got Loch Lynch. Can you see Loch Lynch? Okay. I, 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 do you know Loch Lynch? No, uh, I'm, I'm a blow in now, so you're going uh, to explain this to there's Loch Lynch. <laughs> but uh, basically, I was photographing McGlynn's and he was stood outside there, so I took a photograph of him. And then you put him in now. I stuck him on there. And you've one other map I know as well here. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. One, is, uh, this one is Strand Hill and the Calera Peninsula. Yeah, okay, well, that'd and be this popular. one has uh, two mermaids on it, as you can see. One of them playing the bear on, the other playing the heart. The harp, sort as of, they do. Like. And uh, there's a little insect map here of Strand Hill. It's all done oldie worldy style. But the yes. main thing is they're hand printed and they're signed and it's uh, numbered. This was a proof, okay, and so I have my own emboss here, John the Map. So these are a, a, these are a limited edition. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, but you told me as well. I know this from chat earlier on. You can buy them framed or buy them just kind of as right, a nice yeah. print as well. Well, I'm, I'm selling the prints on their own for thirty uh, euros and the framed ones for hundred euros. Okay. So if so, people yeah. want to buy them, is there an email? Um, Sligo musicians at gmail.com uh, Sligo musicians at gmail.com and that, that uh, email will come back a little bit later on mm. so back to John now we've talked about your mapping and I think I suppose I've known you even more so for in the last number of years was your love of Sligo music mm -hmm. so for anyone that doesn't know John has set up a website sligomusicians.com for how many years now John? Uh, six years now Six years. Mm. It feels longer because yeah, I've, <laughs> I've seen the gigs yeah, right. longer and you basically upload every gig in Sligo mm -hmm. uh, on this website. You do it voluntarily and uh -huh. f like no money involved at all. You just mm -hmm. love just doing this. Mm -hmm. And like, what does that involve work-wise for you in a, on a normal week? Like how much um, effort? Generally uh, 15 to 20 hours a week. Wow. Most of it's on the phone. Chasing just calling people. Them, yeah, and calling them over and over <laughs> and over again. And so well, good. things are constantly changing in Sligo. No, of course. Of Sligo course. is a huge music scene, far bigger yeah. than, I mean, it's, uh, it's about one third of the music scene of Dublin for a population that's one seventy fifth of. Uh, like it's, it is. And I mean, I said, I'm a, mm. a blow in myself, but like in my life in Sligo, it's just everywhere you go mm. on a on a quiet Tuesday night, you could have three brilliant gigs happening. Oh, yeah. In minimum, three pubs. Yeah. Like it's, it's unbelievable. Mm. So I was going to ask you about the headaches of running mm. it, but it is chasing people. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's listening that owns a music venue in County Sligo uh, or any musicians, if John asks you, he is only trying to help and promote, so maybe mm -hmm. give you back the text. And you don't, you don't, you can't do it off your smartphone. You have to cycle home. On the computer, yeah. Cycle home on your trusty little folded bike, yeah, which is yeah, famous yeah, around yeah, Sligo yeah, as well. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. if you're uptown and someone texts you, oh, I'm of a gig on, you mm -hmm. will drop everything, go back to your mm -hmm. house. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable to think the level mm -hmm. you've, you've done. But I live gone close to town, like. so it's fine. But still, mm. I mean, it, it's a great effort. And I think, mm. I suppose, on behalf of anyone in that scene, I, like, you're a credit to the town and it's amazing what you've done. Mm. And as I said, it's such a promotion for the town. How many gigs can be on in town in a given well, week? In the winter, generally, we'll have about 90 live gigs a week. In Thank the you. summer, it might go up to 140, 150, 160. Depends what's on. Yeah. Uh, sometimes in the summer, we have four or five festivals running concurrently. Wow. And so, you don't I mean, just... We, we, have, uh, we have so many festivals. We've got the Jazz Project, we've got Carja, we've got 
It's like alive in October. Um, yeah. And at the Shanty Festival. Well, and, and you will, yeah, like, if you're on John's page in those weeks, it's like yes, it's exactly. crushed up. There's so well, much I try stuff to in fit there. into an A4 shape. Yeah. So 90 gigs in an A4 shape, you can just about do. Yes. But uh, if when, it goes to 160, I have to squeeze it all up. You can okay. only read it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But again, people can go in and zoom in. At sure, least yeah. they're there. That's right, yeah. And you don't just showcase what's on in County Sligo itself. Mm. If there's a Sligo musician kind of anywhere in the world, oh, yeah, sure, yeah. you'll come well, as found, long as I'm, they tell you. Yeah. Well, I'm, I basically have to go online and go to their pages. and so Because uh, especially around Paddy's Day, Lots yes. of Irish bands are playing worldwide. Dervish will always do a, an American tour. Yes. Two or three weeks either side of Paddy's Day. And uh, so I actually have the gigs and where they're on. Now, in the old days, I was doing it in Flash. And Flash has now been disbanded yeah, by the internet, work, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, and so they're all live links. So if you're on a computer, you can just click on it. It would open up that page. Oh, so bring you directly to the details yeah, oh, of, of course, the gig. Yeah, yeah. So not only are you listing them, you're now putting links oh, to Oh, I everything. can't anymore. Oh, with the to flash. Fashion, okay, yeah. okay. Well, we'd see if we can get if some. I, if I was just doing hot spots, it'd take yeah. forever. It'd just constantly changing the yes, shape yes, of them. Yes. Well, we might have some web designer watching in that might be able to help John mm. with that. And well, there was a couple of people saying we should turn it into an app. Absolutely. But most people think making an app's easy. It actually costs an awful no, lot of money. No, it takes a lot of work for sure. Yeah. And during the last lockdown, I know you're a lover of Sligo gigs, mm. but no more than the rest of us, we all miss the amazing live music mm. scene here. But you took on a whole new uh, side to that project. Mm -hmm. You put on loads of live streams, lockdown That's live right, yeah. streams. Yeah. How many gigs did you put on? Uh, I'm not sure, about 150. 150 in the last since, year, since March last, last, last year. Yeah. Wow. And they were nearly all for charity as well. Well, what I did was I contacted the White Hag and also the Lock Guild Distillery. Yes. And they gave me free samples for the musicians. So initially, I was giving bottles of whiskey or free White Hag beers to the musicians. Yes. Uh, occasionally, some money if it was a charity gig and we had some money financing. Most of the time, it's just beer. And then uh, we would have different charities, usually local charities, yeah. sometimes national charities. Okay. But for instance, we ran the Shanty Festival last year in mid June mm. and we raised, I don't know, about 5,000 for the RNLI. Right. And we've done various festivals for, for instance, the Sligo Neurology Support mm -hmm. Centre, Declan Waltz's charity. And we've run a couple of festivals then. We ran one uh, in, uh, what was it called now? We ran a Valentine's Day uh, yes. special. Yeah, yeah, I remember And we too. ran a Christmas festival and you know, so various things. Like, um, do you have any idea roughly how much you've raised in the last year? Some in the region of 50,000. So 50,000 and over 100 or so gigs. 150 gigs. 150 yeah. gigs. And again, in fairness, we have to give credit mm. to a lot of the musicians. Most oh, of, of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like not a, playing. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I know, I know. But what I mean yeah. is like they gave mm. a voluntarily of, course, of yeah. their time. Yeah. Mm. And okay, they got a couple of beers, which mm. is great. But I mean, they put in the effort to do that oh, as course, well. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I think we're all uh, in agreement that it would be so good to see the music scene back as soon as we mm. can. You know? oh, of course, yeah. Jeez, and yeah. I think that at the moment, there's everyone saying there's guidelines. So guidelines are just that. So mm. maybe some places can well, start uh, doing a bit of music well, again. Well, this weekend, I've got Owen Troy, Aileen Concan and Shane McGowan playing on the McGlynn's page. So it's on I'm the Facebook page? On the Facebook okay. page of McGlynn's. But I've spoken to Dara McGlynn. He's going to then live stream it through to the... Because uh, he'll have people he has in his, his beer garden. Out in the his back. beer garden, yeah. yeah. So basically, while they're playing, they'll be directly connecting with people, and hopefully, some people will be on the so, phones. And so, if you get to McLean, that's yeah. one example yeah. this week. And that again is that raising money for charity as well. Yeah, or? that'll be for hospice, <laughs> Northwest Hospice. So again, it's it's, it's mm. all it's all amazing. So if you're yeah. in McLean's, you'd be actually able to hear the feed that you've organised right, yeah. in the uh, back. So it gets mm. to feel a bit more like mm. the live music you're trying to. Amazing. And then on top of all of that, I know you talked to me a few months ago about an idea you had of maybe to try and get the music back in the pubs again. Now, oh, yeah, that's, as you were saying before, I've been trying to do. Yeah, yeah. so like, tell us a bit more about what um, this well, might one, be. One of the big problems is the so-called wet pubs, the ones that aren't even open at the moment, that don't have that second stream of income from food and food, so on. Yeah. Uh, they're unfortunately uh, the ones that do most of the really good music, usually the early week sessions. So you have Shamey, O'Dowd and Kieran Quinn's Trad Fusion gig in yeah, Connolly's. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, Brian McDonough, Rick Epping, Leonard Barry, Philip Duffy, Playing trad in shoots. You also have no crows playing in shoots. That's a Tuesday. These, isn't these it? Monday, Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, they're three of the biggest gigs of the week. And by by, oh, <laughs> so I thought I switched this. This must this be a musician ringing, John. <laughs> I just switched this. <laughs> Someone say, Troy's John, I have a gig not, tonight. <laughs> Will you put it up on the website? <laughs> Sorry, we uh, did that was, tell John. That was Owen board. Troy. <laughs> Owen Troy, and I, he's one of your biggest players on all these nights. Yeah, yeah. He's the most out of anyway. So Owen, we'll come back to you in a minute, Owen. And he's ringing again. Now, this must be very important for Owen. We so, knew in the first how show... How do you switch this off? Something oh, happened like this. What a try. What do you ask? We don't care how much money you've raised for charity. No, we're, we're, we have it off now. So your it's new project is to try and get mm. music mm. back into these small mm. pubs that uh -huh. don't have a revenue stream of uh -huh. food. Mm. Okay. So 
what is it you're looking for? Are we looking for sponsors to do this? Because the pubs, it wouldn't be maybe in some of their budgets to pay for live music because there's a restricted crowd in. Uh, yes, that's so right. So yeah. you were kind of trying to drum up well, some well, well, basically the problem is is that a publican that has social distancing, say like mm. a place like Shoot the Crows, one yeah. of the biggest problems they've got is that uh, there's a really limited number of people you can fit in there. Now, Ronan's opened upstairs to get more in people shoot in. Crows. You shoot the crows. Yeah. yeah. And he's had to split the front snug into two. Uh, just get more people in, you know, and uh, so it means he's getting a quarter of his previous custom. Okay. And the last thing he needs is a bunch of musicians taking up a whole table. Well, I mean, it's just, he's then yeah, got to understand. pay and give free beers to. Yeah, so I've yeah. done a deal with the White Hag is going to produce uh, maybe small kegs yeah. and give it to the pubs that are doing the yeah yeah doing the. <laughs> One tries busy again. <laughs> One tries said it again. So and, uh, you're looking for businesses, maybe, or individuals that might sponsor. That's right, yeah. Now, again, this mightn't happen yet. We're waiting mm. on restrictions. Course, but maybe yeah. in the coming months, yeah. uh, you're trying to put a, a setup in place that people might say, well, I'll mm. donate maybe 80 or 100. Yeah. That will just put a musician back sure, yeah. in a gig so, yeah. and uh, provide a bit of music mm. to those pubs. Mm. So, again, uh, mm. how do people, if they want to support you on that, mm. how can they? I presume it's the same email again, mm. sniggymusicians at gmail.com. Sure. That is a great email uh, to have in this town. Mm. You know, mm. So that's how people can get in touch with you with that. Mm. Well, John, it's I could literally talk to you for about another hour or two, no mm. question about it. And I'm glad to have brought you on the show because even in my involvement in things in town, I've just seen the work you've done for years. And I know that not everyone maybe understands what you do or how much work is involved and the amazing work you've done for charity. So mm. I suppose on, on, on behalf of Sligo, <laughs> thanks very much. And don't forget his beautiful artwork projects uh. as well. That's SligoMusicians at gmail.com. They're beautiful signature pieces. So, John... Thanks for coming, and My we'll pleasure. see you hopefully soon at a Great gig to in here. town. Thanks a million. So, uh, elbows? Yeah, elbows again. Yeah. Cheers, Brendan. <laughs> okay.